Hey guys, we done goofed. Yeah. <laughs> it's been a while. It's been a while since we fucked mm-hmm. up royally. Mm-hmm. And boy, <laughs> did I fuck up on this one. Um, there's in Miller, a, Miller, no, Blake did it. Let's just Blake did it. Let's blame it on Blake. Thanks, Blake. We appreciate it. Um, in, the, on, on, in Audacity, right, there is this little selector where you select um, where your input is, and there's a built in input, which is bad because that's a tiny microphone on a MacBook. And then there's a uh, USB audio codec, which is good because that's hooked into the soundboard that we paid a lot of money for and should probably use every episode. Sometimes we just say, fuck it. <laughs> you know, this is raw. We're going to go guerrilla tactics on this bitch and we're going to record it on MacBook mic because mm. we fucking feel like it. <laughs> we're just going to do it on purpose sometimes. <laughs> That's one of these episodes, so you're welcome. <laughs> yeah, so it, we've got some good content. You're just going to have to dig deep to get through it. That's okay. It's okay. If there's any joy that I get out of this mishap, I mean, not mishap, this planned strategy that we've executed, <laughs> is that Blake might have a really hard time hearing the names for the fantasy football draft mm. later that we announce later in this episode. Mm-hmm. So... I can just I get a lot of joy from just imagining him rewinding it several yeah. times to try to make up. And the we name. didn't take any notes on that part, so no, we didn't. No. I, we didn't take any notes at all. No. We just kind of figured, you know what? It's Tuesday. It's eleven thirty-five. Fuck it. <laughs> just fuck it. Let's just throw something up there and let's just see if people listen you just to see it. Let's do. <laughs> this is to separate the wheat from the chaff here. here. Yeah, so if it, you make it through this one, you're you're a dedicated. Then we listener. then we appreciate it. Yeah. We definitely let us do. know if you made do. it through this whole episode. Yeah, please <laughs> tweet us, call us, put it on Facebook. Let us know that you're a Tad Pog patriot. But please um, don't complain because remember this is free. <laughs> it actually costs us money. You're welcome. <laughs> Hi there, listener. You're about to experience Tad Pog. Tyler and Dave play old games, and there will be plenty of game talk, but also copious amounts of crude, off color, offensive, and immature speech. So if you are of a rather sensitive humor constitution, We're just letting you know what you're in for with this show. It has games. It has jokes. You know, just games and jokes. Take the games, take the jokes, and have a good time. Hello, Internet, and welcome to another Tad Talk podcast. It's a show that happens twice a week. We're two to three to four old guys. Fuck it, four. Four, four, fuck it, fine. We'll just, whoever comes in here and sets down, we'll just talk, fine, four guys. Talk about old games. It is Original Flavor Wednesday, so that means we are going to be talking about IGN's 20th ranked games for Mario All-Stars. Because that's what we do on, on Wednesday shows. Strictly on Wednesday shows. But in, in order to do that, I felt it was very important that we bring on two expert guest hosts on all things Mario and Super Nintendo. They have a, a world's worth of knowledge <laughs> mm-hmm. on Mario Brothers in general. We but almost specifically, specifically Super Mario <laughs> All Stars. So welcome to the show, guys. Yeah. So of, of increasingly more episode fame, John Turley. Hey guys. And making his Tad Bog Tad Bog Tad Pog debut. You replacing me? My friend Tim Bear. Hey guys. Hey Tim. Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming on. Uh, this is probably how you expected to spend this evening, right? <laughs> That's right. <yeah. laughs> Tim, Tim is a friend from seminary, so he is the fourth priest that we've had on Tadpog. This very, very religious podcast we have going here. <laughs> the holiest of shows. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, but I'm your beard host, Tyler. And earlier in this week, I started, I saw a GIF uh, on Reddit that made me start thinking about things in my childhood that sort of broke my heart. I remember just like seeing those and just being like, not just like upset, but just like so thoroughly sad. And most of the time it, it involved a TV show where a girl was involved. And I believe the first one... You've had a pretty good life. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 It's true. I was not expecting that. I was like, yeah. man, Tyler's getting deep. He is about to expose some real turmoil here. And then you said television show. Like, yep. All right, okay. We're back. We're back. We're back to the baseline. But, man, this this uh, middle class uh, white kid from Kentucky has seen some shit. <laughs> shit I don't know, man. It's, 
Uh, I think it should be noted that you have like an unhealthy obsession with television mm-hmm. shows. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's that's what raised me. <laughs> no, I have great parents. They just like TV. It's fine. They don't listen. You don't have to lie. I think the first th- yeah, that's true. <laughs> the very first time was probably uh, watching the Sword and Stone. Oh yeah, I just rewatched that mm-hmm. weirdly right enough. <laughs> and there's a point in the Sword and Stone where. Merlin changes Arthur into a squirrel. Yeah. And when he's a squirrel in a tree, he meets a girl squirrel. He does. And the girl squirrel is just so, like, in love with him. Mm-hmm. And as a chubby kid who didn't have a girlfriend very often growing up, I was like, man, that's, look at that look at that girl squirrel. She just wants to love him. She just she just wants to be with him. You understood. I understood. And then whenever he... But he's all like, no, no, go, go away, girl squirrel. And then when he turns back into a boy... The girl squirrel is just so so heartbroken, and that mm-hmm. that broke my heart as a kid seeing seeing animated girl squirrel just slowly just tail goes down, sleep back into the tree. They got you. That's they got yeah. Me. They got me. Uh, the second one uh, during Salute Your Shorts. Nice. Okay. <laughs> there's this a, have to do with uh, which character? Uh, ZZ ZZ and Budnick. There's an episode because Budnick is after Melanie throughout the course of the show. Him being the the badass and Melanie being the popular girl. ZZ is the weird girl. I thought it was was it? I thought wasn't there one on there named Dina? Uh, you're right. You're Melanie right, is hey, hey dude, right? Yeah, you're yeah, right. That's been it, Stiller's life. Dina. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Dina is what I'm thinking. Of. Dina is the Dina is the popular girl. Uh-huh. Telly's the athlete, and ZZ's the weird. Girl. Right. Right. And Budnick is always has a crush on Dina and is trying to pursue Dina and Dina thinks he's shit and it's never going to go for him. And But somehow messages get crossed and ZZ hears that Budnick has a crush on her. So then ZZ then gets a crush on Budnick and is pursuing him and trying to get with him. And Budnick just... I uh, just in ZZ and breaks ZZ's heart because she thought a oh boy, all oh boy, actually likes me. And honestly, I thought ZZ was the most attractive one anyway. I disagree. So I didn't. That's the only reason I knew Dina was on that show because <laughs> that was my girl. <laughs> and then there's, I remember there being a line where they're supposed to go to dance together and Budnick won't go with her and she's like alone in the cabin by herself and tells Budnick, you know, she's not going to go for you. So whenever she, whenever she breaks your heart, I'll be there to pick up all the pieces. And as like a kid, I was like, oh, oh, "That's heavy." Man. That's, <laughs> but they they managed to resolve it all in like twenty two minutes, right? Yeah. So I, mean, I don't think it ever came up again. <laughs> so I wouldn't worry about her too much. So like the, these were these were gifts from the show. Oh yeah, you did say you, you saw some gifts. It was yeah. it was a gift with the two squirrels that made me think about it. <clears throat> I'm glad the guy who's been drinking remembered that because I sure as hell did. I was enraptured with your with your television stories. Yeah, you went so deep I couldn't remember everything. So yeah. <laughs> and then the last one, this one not being about a girl, but just something I remember seeing that Sorry. seeing that maybe just ugh, is the brave little toaster and the flower that is away from all the other flowers mm-hmm. that the toaster goes and the flower just doesn't want to leave, just wants to have a friend and whenever he has to leave to go find their owner and the flower <clears throat> just droops and like one petal falls off. Just about everything about the Brave Little Toaster is sad, though. Brave Little Toaster will fuck your shit up. Yeah, it will. Yeah, well, I'm way more glad than I one. never saw the Brave Little Toaster. <laughs> you can be the Brave horrible. Little You can be our Brave Little Toaster if you want. I don't think I want to. <laughs> You'll be fine. Everyone, your, everyone else around you will just crumble, though. No, that's, <laughs> that's, not, that's your title, Brave Little Toaster. <laughs> <laughs> that was a Nicole face and sound that you made. <laughs> Oh, the the resting bitch face thing <laughs> killed me. <laughs> I watched that episode, or listen, watched. I watched that episode, listened to that episode. I was like, that's hilarious. I never, <laughs> I, I like think I remember that term in passing one time, mm-hmm. and I was like, oh. Yeah, she hilarious. does have that. <laughs> <laughs> we love her, though. We love her in the resting bitch face. Absolutely. I especially love it when Josh is like, you need to turn off that resting bitch face. <laughs> I'm not a bitch, Josh. I'm just thinking about. No, things. she's 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 a very nice person. <laughs> hey, John. Yeah. How much have you had to drink tonight? <laughs> I don't want. <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> no, I think it's important that we address it. This is not actually a podcast. This is an intervention. <laughs> that's why. Normally, that's why the priest. Is <laughs> Man, you guys have your bases covered. <laughs> wow. Um, I'm about I don't know, about four four or five Guinness, and uh, I'm working on some uh, Seagram Seven right now. Feel pretty good getting there. Not too bad. You're not going to spring a fucking quiz on me, are you? <laughs> 
<laughs> don't, Maybe. Don't, don't do anything like that. I mean, I wasn't gonna, but you kind of give me ideas now. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Internet? I'm Dave. I'm your respectable host. And, man, I sure as hell don't have a story. I guess I'll just look around the table and maybe try to see something that'll... You have a story about Fresca? Uh, I haven't had a Fresca in a long time. Mm-hmm. And that's what everyone says. You, you've you been offering people in the studio Fresca for like three weeks now. And everyone is like, man, I haven't had Fresca in a minute. <laughs> yeah, I'll have one. Mm-mm, man, Fresca's pretty good. I don't know why I never drank that. Mm-hmm. You didn't because you were a kid. And kids fucking hate Fresca. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking loathed it as a kid. Now I really like it. Um, I can try some. I'm not gonna try any of that because that's, would, that's I would, been sitting there. That's for, what's been sitting here for a few weeks. <laughs> that, <laughs> that was one of the first ones he offered. <laughs> <laughs> that's what we like to call now a bug coffin. <laughs> that's what that is. <laughs> that's a bug trap. I was gonna try one live on the air, and that would be my story. But I'm, I can just pretend. I've, I've never were, had a fresco. <laughs> oh man, check out this fresco. It's pretty good. It's pretty good fresco. It's pretty good. I feel like small children need to be applauding now. <laughs> Yay! You can add that in post production. Yeah, because we totally do that. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like we got to get this up on the internet in like thirty minutes. Well, I had to train myself to like grapefruit oh, juice, and Fresca is a a grapefruit soda. So all the kids are clamoring for that grapefruit soda. It's Man, grapefruit. I liked grapefruit uh-huh. when I was a kid. I mean, I know that because yep. I just tasted some, but. <laughs> Anybody, anybody else have a, have a story? Did you first John, stories? Tim, anything? Man, have I had a story yet? <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> what was the, what was the first time you got drunk, John? Mm, um, that would have been with my cousin Jeff. Who's <laughs> Is Jeff going to be mad that you brought that up? No, nah, no, nah, I don't think so. Is, does Jeff's mom listen? <laughs> <laughs> Man, I don't know. My Aunt Helen, she's she's into the technology. So she sounds maybe, pretty cool. If there's, no. a, if there's a maybe on an aunt, she sounds like a pretty cool aunt. I have some cool aunts. Mm. Are they Tadpog cool, though? Mm, no. No. <laughs> no, um, my cousin Jeff got some alcohol from an older kid that he went to church with. And they were Pentecostal, which, you know, that really surprised me that he was able to hook that up. But, uh, yeah, this kid that was, like, just over 21, I guess, went and got him some alcohol. And we drank some terrible, terrible concoctions that consisted, I believe, of uh, grape Kool-Aid and vodka and, like, orange juice or something. (laughs) You just mix it all together? (laughs) Yeah, we were just trying to, you know... (laughs) Vodka and orange juice? That's not going to be a good combination. Put some some Kool-Aid. There's some some purple drink in there. Did you drink them out of sandwich bags? (laughs) (laughs) No, it was some not exactly your top-shelf vodka either. I don't remember what it was, but it came in a plastic bottle, so... I remember when I turned 21, the first thing I did was just buy Grey Goose and top-shelf vodka for all the, all the kids who asked me <laughs> here you go mix this with some i don't know grape juice um some kool-aid there's some robitussin in there but yeah it was uh, it was a rough rough morning <laughs> <laughs> what's up tim not too much i just met you you seem pretty cool though um, uh thanks <laughs> I've, already, I've already like sworn a lot and you're just you're just rolling with it yeah i can roll he's he's lived with blake a long time yeah, so he—he he, that's he my uh, Ted Pog claim to fame. You so. used to live at Blake of Blackthorn fame. <laughs> Oathbreaker, yeah. Blake Oathbreaker. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Did he lie to you a lot? Like he lies to us. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know he's, he's what, what has he lied about? He said specifically that he was going to get us one million Facebook likes, and I think he's probably he's probably pulled in. We've Zero. got yeah, we we've, we've gotten like maybe twelve. And none of those were uh. his doing. <laughs> so just saying. What was the penalty for that? Do you recall? There was a penalty. We're going to go back to he becomes o- the, his title instead of like Savior Blake Woods, he becomes Oathbreaker. <laughs> oh, so we've already just given up we've all hope. We've already, yeah. <laughs> we, we can backtrack and really apologize that he suddenly comes in with a million Facebook likes. Do you have anything like super embarrassing about Blake while you were, like that he did while you guys were living <laughs> together? He told a really embarrassing story on his interview episode. Mm-hmm. So I feel like it's just you can just say whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. I don't know. You know what? <clears throat> we used to joke because 
um, when I when I met Blake, he knew how to. He only knew how to like make three things: like ramen noodle, um, hamburger helper without the hamburger. <laughs> All right. So so more ramen noodles yeah. <laughs> and, and spaghetti with sauce. <laughs> No all like noodle based. Yeah, nice. he's doing, he's there. too up on me actually. <laughs> yeah, so he can boil <clears throat> salted stiff noodles. Yeah. That's about it. That was his. Uh, those are the extent of his cooking skills. So, <clears throat> so and then uh, so I used I would take care of the bills in the in the house and just he just pay me for that. Um, if we were going to cook anything more than noodles, I'd take care of that. And then he met his wife, and so she started to step in. I was able to hand some of those things off. But it sounds like I you was, were like his mom. Yeah, I was about yeah. to say, so <laughs> what you're saying is you did everything. <laughs> I mean, he lived there. <laughs> oh, shit. I used to live with John. I don't think we've ever brought that up on the show. Oh, yeah. I lived yeah. in a tiny, tiny-ass room in your apartment. <laughs> what was that? Um, my bed fit in the room, and that's about it. Um, when I would get out of bed in the morning, I had about eight inches of clearance to like actually stand and like sidle my way to the if door. If you had direction, whatever. you were outside the door for Exactly. Either that or the AC unit would fall out the window. It was not a big apartment in general. And which is crazy because we were so rich. Yeah. yeah. Rolling. Rolling. Just straight balling. Yeah. You know? That's... I mean, we had like we had jobs at the Paducah Sun for God's sake. (laughs) Come on, that's the newspaper of record in Paducah, Kentucky. (laughs) We had like forty copies of the Brave Little Toaster. Like it was nothing. (laughs) I'm just giving them away. I have fond memories of of that apartment though. Staying in there all weekend, just eating just so many Oreos, so many, (laughs) drinking so much sweet tea, and watching so much Naruto. It was it wasn't a terrible apartment. It was just really small. It was incredibly tiny. I also do have fond memories, though. Like Every time my teeth get fuzzy from drinking something with way too much sugar, I think about that apartment <laughs> because that's, that's what it was like. I remember you being, I forget where you were that night, and we were all over there. So just like, I'm going to go jerk off in John's room. <laughs> so John loved it when that happened. <laughs> so went upstairs. Oh, John didn't lock his computer. All right, jerk off at John's computer and then just fill it up with just porn. You're not going to lie. <laughs> Just, I just filled up the desktop with porn. I know he's not going to like it. And then left. It was specifically Lemon Party, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I guess I need to make a note for show notes. Lemon Party. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I remember that. Tim, are you familiar with Lemon Party? I don't think so. Oh, boy. Well, you'll just wait and see. Okay. <laughs> don't click on that link, Tim. Don't do it. All right. Super oh. Mario. No, go ahead. So, I'm sorry. No, no, I'm go ahead. Magic. And since you guys asked me, do you remember the first time that you got drunk? Too? I was trying to think about that when they asked okay. you. And I was hoping I'm not sure. just bring I'm not that sure. over to you, too. But <laughs> I'm not sure if I do. Embarrassing, Blake. was <laughs> higher up on the list. Uh, probably, oh, gosh. I'm not sure when the first time I got drunk was. I, st- I did, and this sounds terrible, I did start drinking more when I met who I'm now married to, my current wife. <laughs> we started drinking more, but I think mean, it was just because she was more fun. <laughs> 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 that anyone else had been like. Because I heard, like, yeah, until you met her, like, you were super straight laced, and she was like, she was wild, and then both we, of we you together balance each other that's out. That's right. We, mel- we balance <laughs> okay. each other out. You're harmonious. Yeah, that's right. It was good for both of us. I was hoping that your answer was going to be that you'd never gotten drunk because Blake kept drinking your alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, actually, Blake barely drank whenever, whenever we lived together in the house, so. I don't know that I. Although now he's clapping connoisseur of rum and Mountain Dew. That's true. It's <laughs> his preferred. Beverage. That's true. That's actually I think his only beverage. <laughs> he needs to put some orange juice in there, right? He's only recently uh, started Classy. drinking uh, oh wines so only, only to like fit in. He won't drink beer. <laughs> I want to see Blake wine drunk. But that's like Tyler. Tyler's uh, designated role is always as bartender, mm-hmm. at least in seminary. That's yeah. True. I had. I remember as soon as we got like. Uh, a check in. I went and dropped four hundred bucks and just made a huge ass bar in our apartment. And for the next three two, years, three years, it lasted three years. Because he never coming over and me just making drinks. Because he never drank it himself, so it's only. So you know it was gonna last. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I remember uh, during a Secret Santa swap we had, I got a bartender's companion book, and I would just go through it and just make people drinks whenever they would come over. We'd have a gathering, whatever yeah. they wanted. <clears throat> 
This is like but since he time. didn't drink it, he wasn't sure if it would taste good. <laughs> so I'm just like, I don't know what this is. Yeah. Here you go. Yeah, just, to try this. That's always what you want to hear your bartender say. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I don't know what this is. Drink it. <laughs> yeah, I, I, really, I love the concept of mixology, but I don't really like alcohol. <laughs> Which is just kind of the opposite. Like if I would make drinks for people... I you know I'd sample one first to make sure I got the mixer right. So. Nope, nope, <laughs> not me. Have to take that one back. How's that fresca? So good, <laughs> love it. Yeah, mm. <laughs> tasty. You know what else I've never had? Um, does it still exist? We're talking about alcohol and <clears throat> drinks that no one has had in years. Is Zima still around? Is that still a thing? No. no. I wish. I never had one because I was too young, but I remember those commercials. I drank a couple of Zimas. Um, I, I think literally maybe two. <laughs> yeah, what'd you think? Uh, mm, I mean, not not great. All right. Josh Nance of Uniracers fame, his his drink of choice all throughout like high school and college was Sky Blue. Okay, yeah. Which was basically Zima. They discontinued them years and years ago. That is all he would drink for a very, very long time. See, I thought Sky was vodka. It was it's Zima? a brand was... of vodka, but they had Sky Blue, which was their small, like, uh, like a malt? Smirnoff kind of okay. drink. Hmm. Can you get can you get those still? The Smirnoff, like triple black and no, stuff no, like that? No, the, no, the Sky Blues? No. So, like... That, he, that's what he would... He would have never went outside Sky Blues had they not been discontinued. <laughs> so, like, universally, people don't like this beverage. Yeah. <laughs> it, so, it sounds like at every turn it fails. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Super Mario All-Stars? Super Mario All-Stars. Let's do it, man. I'm ready. We've already talked about Super Mario Brothers in a previous episode. We've already talked about Super Mario Brothers 2 on a previous episode. We've already talked about Super Mario Brothers 3 on a previous episode. So what is left for us to talk about, really? Super Mario The Lost Levels. The Lost Levels? <laughs> <laughs> should, they, should they have stayed lost? Yeah. Yeah? yeah? Do they belong in a museum? No. <laughs> man, because I... As a kid, well, I guess we'd, uh, uh, do you hear that, Dave? No. I don't have any, mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't have any drinks. Oh, the, any more, any more fresca. Oh, the fresca <laughs> chain is back. It's here to, <laughs> to deliver its sweet, sweet nectar to us. <laughs> yeah. No, I do hear that. I'll just get my fresca and I'll be good. I'll be good to go. I'll just drink it. <laughs> and while you drink it, the Dave Reads <clears throat> Wikipedia, uh, Train brought to you by Fresca. Oh, that you're right. That yeah. is that is right behind it. You're 100 percent correct. It's one of those. Lord Mike, tweet Fresca for us. Full of Fresca. <laughs> mm. I will be surprised if Fresca has a Twitter account. Do you think they do? <laughs> I don't think they do. I think Fresca right now is just like a dude running it from a retirement home, <laughs> like in his spare time. <laughs> they have a Facebook though, right? Because old people have Facebook. Yeah, it's just, I mean it's, we're on there. It's pictures of random grandkids. <laughs> Train Fresca. Maybe you can get them to sponsor one of your episodes. See, that's what I'm thinking. That would be great. Uh, so let's let's show the Fresca a new generation. <laughs> <laughs> a newer generation. <laughs> hey, has there been any progress in getting Tim Allen on the show? That's... No. Uh, he so uh, Lord Mike tweet exalted Lord Mike tweeted him, but no, no, no he reply. did he didn't call in surprisingly. Yeah, it was <laughs> weird. The the best I, that we've done is we've got Michael Winslow to retweet. Us. Michael so, mm-hmm. uh, Police Academy. Sound effects. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah mm-hmm. okay. So that's, cool. our, that's our brush with fame. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I don't I'm, mean it as shitty as it sounded. <laughs> no, no, that guy's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I'm going to get on Facebook for the first time in like six months and, and try to get... Should I throw something at Tim Allen? <laughs> Please. No. That would be great. I want Tim Allen on the show. Man. Yeah, we would love that too. Or one of us could just pretend to be Tim Allen. <laughs> Yeah. Tyler's, Tyler's got it down. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Super Mario All-Stars, or as it's known in Japan, Super Mario Korekushan, or the Super Mario Collection. That's just how you say it <laughs> in Japanese, apparently. Is a collection of Super Mario platforming video games that was developed and published by Nintendo for the Super Entertainment System in 1993. The game contains enhanced remakes of Super Mario Bros., Super Mario Bros. The Lost Levels, Super Mario Bros. 2, and Super Mario Bros. 3. The games are all developed to take advantage of the Super NES hardware, featuring updated graphics and sound and additional save mechanisms. Um, An alternate version of Super Mario All-Stars was later released in 1994, 
that included Super Mario World. Mm-hmm. Um, Super Mario All Stars was ported and re-released to the Wii in 2010 to celebrate the 25th anniversary of Super Mario Brothers, which they sold, by the way, as just a retail copy. Like they sold it in a box, which is ridiculous <laughs> considering that this game is as old as it is. Mm-hmm. They just put it. They just here's your Wii game. Oh, wow. <laughs> Come on, it's in, it's in a box. They added a soundtrack, but mm, it's 2010. We could pretty much get the music from Mario. Thanks. <laughs> Whenever this game came out, when I was a kid, like I flipped out. I thought this was the best thing I had ever seen. <laughs> Why? Because I, I I came along at just the tail end of the NES. So I played Mario 1, 2, and 3, but not extensively. I loved them, and because they, I didn't have them, I you know, wanted them so very badly. Had you finished them? No. Okay, so this is a huge deal then. This oh, is yeah. a huge deal. Because now you have an opportunity mm-hmm. to just run the gamut. So that's why I got it, and that's what I did. I was, And the graphics were better, the sound was better. I was so excited, and I was like, Lost Levels, what is this? There's more Mario. And that's where I, nope, sorry, I'm never going to play this ever, ever again. Why is that? I think lost <clears throat> lost levels. Okay, so here here is the the mythos behind Mario the Lost Levels. Yeah, let's explain that. So it was supposed to be Mario Two. It, it in in Japan it is Mario Two. It is the sequel to the to Super Mario Bros. Right. But and I to, it is a good good call on Nintendo America to not sell this game in 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 the United States. Yes, because it. It is so incredibly frustrating and difficult, and playing it, um, I had a terrible, terrible time playing it. I thought the controls were garbage. It feels like, like you know, when you get like you can get online and see like you, YouTube videos where people make their own Mario levels that are just crushingly, horrendously difficult, mm-hmm. and like some things like you have to stand still or you can only press forward every ten seconds is the only way you can hope to survive these insane levels. It feels like that. It feels like. Somebody's just trying to fuck with you. I've actually got a whole section of my notes about that. Um, <laughs> my my first note here is that um, I feel like Nintendo is just trying to fuck with you. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's actually a part in the Lost Levels where uh, it's in World 3-1. There you find a warp, which, by the way, I don't know if any of you ever played with the kid that I played with who's like, you can totally jump over the flagpole. I'm sure like oh, yeah. everyone yeah, yeah, everyone yeah. has heard that at some point. You cannot do that in Super Mario Brothers. Uh, you can in the Lost Levels. And what you're rewarded with is a warp back to World 1. Because <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck you. So it is. Like, it is, it is like... But see, I like that a lot. I like it because Nintendo. It, it kind of feels like this is this is how I imagine it went down. Um, hey Miyamoto, really like that Mario game. Pretty easy though, huh? And then he was like, <laughs> "Fuck you! I'm gonna build a game that is just gonna bend you over, and you're gonna fucking take it, and you're gonna love it because it's Mario Brothers." And, it, and the world was just like, "Okay, but not in the United States, please." <laughs> and I was like, yes, this sounds awesome. <laughs> <laughs> but I like I like the difficulty. I don't think I didn't have the problem with the controls. I mean, the controls are identical. Yeah, I know to the you first disagree game. with me, but yeah, I tried playing it again yesterday, and it was just like I felt like the controls were just so incredibly floaty, and it's uh, that it was unplayable as Luigi <clears throat> because he operates like Mario to Luigi, and that he jumps a little higher, and, right? Which I think is cool, and he skids more. Yeah. So like he definitely controls differently, but I think Mario controls identically. I mean, it's it. They didn't change anything about Mario, this game, from Mario 1. I, but here, I've got this issue with pretty much all of the games on this cartridge. I think that with their... I don't like their upgrades to the graphics. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's not from like a point of like old man curmudgeonism. It's just... Give me my pixels. Yeah, it's just... It's more difficult for me to play. Like, I feel like the updated graphics actually like take away from the mechanics because um, you just have it's it's more work for my brain to decide do I need is the stuff in the background important or do I just need to it's difficult for me to focus on the foreground on the action mm. um, I I really like the difficulty uh, I haven't beat it yet but I'm on eight four because um, you told me recently because there was a ranking of the top 
10 or whatever like hardest video games yeah there's a magazine in the uk called retro gamer and um they do have a list i don't know how extensive i don't know how big the list is but you're you're 100 right i know where you're going with this um this game the lost levels in particular not super mario all-stars is on their list of one of the most difficult games um I think they're excluding like the games that are difficult because they weren't designed well. Like, because the, the games they're yeah. talking about are like actually designed well. They're just designed to be challenging. Mm-hmm. It's not like Silver Surfer for the NES or any of that bullshit <laughs> where it's just like the game is just not mm-hmm. designed. It's just like uh, we got some extra gray plastic. Uh, any ideas how we could sell it? Yeah, throw Silver Surfer on that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> because let's see. Because playing through Lost Levels, it's just like, we're Mario 1, it's just a gradual build, elements slowly change, you know, you get the slow, the slow build to difficulty. Because like, Lost Levels though, like, the second level, you're already put on like, jumps that were in level 7 of the first Mario. Yeah, I was telling John earlier um, that the way it feels to me is like, the Lost Levels, like, World 1-1 of the Lost Levels is 9-1. Mm-hmm. And then, like, eight World 8 is, like, World 16. Because you're 100% right, it doesn't it doesn't start at the difficulty level that, that Super Mario Brothers starts at. It starts at the end of Super Mario Brothers. Well, and I think in the original Super Mario Brothers, they're also, they're giving you that learning curve. Now, they're teaching you to play the game a little bit. And I think this one, it's just like, you play the first one. We assume, we assume you play the first one. And yeah, good luck. Because, Tim, as a video gamer, <laughs> as not a general video gamer. Right. What what is your impression of? I mean, Mario is kind of heralded as being such an amazing series throughout pretty much all video gamers. What do you feel? Do you like Mario games? Do they are they enjoyable to like someone who doesn't play a ton of games? Uh, I've only I've only played I think the, like the original Mario on Nintendo. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it, I think it's fun, uh, but it's because it is easy to jump into. You know, it's like the staple. Well, see, it's like, game. yeah, yeah, it's it's generally acceptable. Like right. anybody can pick up a Nintendo controller and play yeah, yeah. Mario a little bit. Yeah, not so, yeah, Lost Levels. Nope, no, not gonna happen. No, you're not gonna introduce somebody. Man, you know what's good? It's Lost Level shit. Yeah, don't pick up, don't pick up that purple mushroom. <laughs> you're saying it like it's a bad thing, though. I think, it is. <laughs> I think it's a great thing. I think it's awful. I think it's great to be like, hey, man, I can beat this. Can you? Can't you can't do it? <laughs> <laughs> because I'm the kid. The kid you're saying, I'm the kid you're saying that to. No, 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 I hate it. It's not fun because I can't beat it. Mm. So, which is kind of ten percent of what I'm saying. <laughs> so, what, what do they think of it in Japan? I think it was critically. I know it sold well. Yeah. That really doesn't. I don't think that really means a whole lot because it's yeah. the sequel to right. Super Mario it's Brothers. Gonna, it's so going to sell. Do they think it's easy there? I don't know. I'm, I'm curious to know. You're right. We look, say what you will about the Japanese. I don't think there's any way this could be considered easy on any planet. I mean, this game looked fucking I, I assume hard. it went over well in Pan, is what I would assume. Like, they enjoyed it. I don't think, did they ever, I need to see if they ever got our Mario 2. Because they got the, well, they got the original, that Doki Doku Doku Marukan. Doki Doki Panic? Yeah. Yeah. Um, they got that, and I'm sure, I know, I mean, at some point, they got Super Mario Brothers 2. Like, I didn't, I don't think they got it in the, in the 80s. But did they get some, Mario All-Stars and then? <laughs> right? <laughs> um, but, see, if, I also think this is interesting, that, that our sequel, the North American sequel to Super Mario Brothers, had so much more in it that lasted in the Super Mario IP mm-hmm. because it has you know pal blocks, shy guys, um, the ability to pick things up, um, Toad. I mean, it, if, it had a whole bunch of stuff that has lasted. Yeah, if it wasn't for the designers making this so hard and having to change it for an American audience, I'd say thirty percent of the Mario lore would be completely different. Yeah, and and that's weird to think about. And I I think that like looking at it from like. A standpoint of how impactful the Lost Levels is, I don't think it's very impactful at all. Um, because I think it, in- it introduced red piranha plants. Those didn't exist before Super Mario Brothers to Japan. Um, and it introduced a whole bunch of stuff that was never used again. The poison mushrooms. The poison mushrooms, which, um, what do those do? Kill you. If you're small. Yeah. yeah. And if you are large or have firepower or flower power, it... D like, levels you. You guys hear the sound effects of John Tim drinking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, here let me let me pull this straw out so I can stir my drink. Okay. Oh, now it's not going to do it. Motherfucker. <laughs> We're waiting to hear that. Awesome. Yeah, hold on, hold on, hold on. 
Yeah. Oh, that's a good. That's a good, good. Kentucky sound. <laughs> <'Cause>, ah. <laughs> that shows us the difference between Tim and John already. <laughs> Tim is having like wine out of a Rydell wine glass. John's drinking <laughs> secret <laughs> seven out of a McDonald's cup. <laughs> what you, what you trying to say? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not classy. <laughs> We're trying to say that you're of Irish descent, just like I am. <laughs> a girl I went to culinary school with would always, she would go buy huge jugs of Chardonnay and then go get a water at Wendy's, dump the water out, fill it full of Chardonnay, go to class. Mm, yeah. 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 I knew some kids in high school that you know, did very similar things. <laughs> <laughs> just be completely tanked. A lot of our best players at our girls' basketball team in high school got suspended for bringing vodka in their water bottles whenever they went to state. Oh, wow. Yeah, so they were drinking vodka before they went out and play, competing played. at that upper <laughs> echelon. Yeah. I'm sure that worked out for them. Nice. <laughs> yeah, we lost first round. <laughs> <laughs> No, but I, yeah, spoilers, I didn't play this game because I almost never play the games we talk about. I just talk about them like I fucking know something. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I did watch Dave play this game for like, what, about three hours, right? And I played yep. the shit out of the original Mario, and I've I've beaten the original Mario on the second quest in the second run through, so... So that's something, right? Yeah, that is. That's difficult but, to do. Um, but yeah, th this game looked really, really hard. But you said there was a continue in it, like in the in the game. Yeah, you could continue. And in the original Mario, it was like, no, 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 you you lose those original three lives. Right. But fuck you. You're starting over. Uh, the fact that there was a continue mechanic in this, I think, is what makes it playable. Definitely. Otherwise, man, I would last about five seconds playing this game. Well, and Super Mario All Stars has a feature where you can essentially make one save state, which is really nice too, because oh, okay. you can save you can save your game progress, um, and that is that makes things a whole lot easier because you couldn't do that in the the Famicom. Release. Just once, you can only do it once. Yeah, they only gave you one. Uh, you could save uh, and continue, or save and quit. Um, they didn't give you an option to to save multiple. Because I tried playing this. Tim was watching me play this last night. Ten minutes, and I, me dying had to continue a few times. And it was like, all right, I'm good. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, but, Baby Dibs, there you go. Here's a game that I did not put more. The podcast is longer than the time I put into the game. I made up for it because I have probably put... I mean, we stopped recording one night, and I started playing it, and had no like completely lost track of time. Yeah, because so John was like, "It's one thirty. No, he was. <laughs> yeah, I was like, "Oh, really?" I was like, "Okay, well, I'll be ready to leave here. Just give me a few more tries." And then, like, cut to thirty minutes later, I'm final. John's like, oh, "I gotta fucking go, man. We like we have got to." <laughs> I have to be at work in three hours. <laughs> but this was like this game for me was I, another reason I like it so much is because. Um, first of all, I'm going to go ahead and come clean. I don't like the All-Stars version. So that is, that's out there. So I didn't fucking play the All-Star version. I tried it. Um, I, I bought it on the 3DS store. They've got the Famicom version. And it is just straight up like old school Mario. And um, I loved that. Huh. Um, I mean, it's it's the same. I mean, it's just as you know, pounding as All Stars is, but it it at least graphically looks like Super Mario Brothers One. Now, I'm curious. You played both of them, uh huh? Because I know that you know one looks kind of like I guess like Super Mario Brothers Three, sort of. Yeah, you know, the the All Stars version does. Yeah, it looks like the version World. I watch you play or World. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the version I watch you play just looks like they took Mario and just made more levels for it, or the original Super Mario Brothers for the NES and made more levels for it. Yeah, that, exactly. That's how it originally was this, released, at least in Japan. The mechanics are exactly the same. Like, they do not differ at all. I didn't notice a difference, okay. except for Luigi. And they, the add, slide, they yeah. add shit. Like, there's wind in certain levels of the game, and that's like a completely new mechanic, where it okay. just blows your character usually forward. But that's present in both. Oh, yeah, in both All-Stars okay. and on the 3DS version. Right. Yeah. Um, but I think it's... Because of that, like, spoilers, I don't think All Stars is that great. Um, and I know we're not really, we, I guess we could be to the point where we ask whether it should be on the list. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, you know how I feel about it. I do know how you feel about <laughs> it, but maybe not everyone does. What do, what do you feel about it? I don't feel like it should be on the list at all. And <clears throat> is that because it's a compilation game? Just because it is a compilation game. Like, I love, this is a kid, this is one of my favorite games as a kid. 
but it's just it's a bunch of NES games put together. I don't feel like that justifies it being the best Super Nintendo game. I love the God of War collection on PlayStation 3 because mm-hmm. I didn't get to play the other God of Wars until I got that. But there's no way in hell I would ever say the God of War collection is one of the greatest PS3 games. Right. You know, it just doesn't... Doesn't make sense on a list of original games. Yeah, it right. Really I feel like the best Super Nintendo game should be the original games for Super Nintendo. And the only thing new it really gave us was the Lost Levels. Mm-hmm. Um, if you take the compilation element out of it, like, is it possible for you to take that out? And if you took that out, do you think it belongs on the list or no? Because it still is like, from from my perspective, it is still like three of the best games. Ever, you know, yeah, I'll, I'll put on one cartridge that everybody can enjoy. So from that standpoint, uh, I would put it on a on a list of very great. Of it's still hard for me to strike that element. Like it's still <laughs> yeah, no, it, I get it. It's good. I mean, it's it's great. It's a great value. It's yeah. one of the best. Like gaming values, it is way the fuck up there. I'm glad you brought that up because my lead in to that or from that is. I feel like that's why it's on this list, because it takes the three great NES games Mm. and puts them on a cartridge and gives you a little bonus with the lost levels. But what I think is interesting is I feel like that's why IGN put it on this list, because it's a value, but yet they don't talk about the Super Mario World bundle as well. Mm. Like, that's not even mentioned. Yeah. There's, like, there's a cartridge. Why isn't... Super Mario World is on their list, and it's, it's very, high. very high up there. <clears throat> why not Why not make it Super Mario All-Stars Super Mario World? Yeah. Why would that make it even better to put it up there? That's, that's really what makes me feel like they were kind of phoning it in mm. on this, because it's like... I don't know. You have the option of having two of the games on your list in one cartridge. Maybe that should be on your list. <laughs> yeah, no, you're right. <laughs> but it's because mm. also it makes me kind of wonder about how differently do Americans and Japanese consume games? Because like back then, was this like was this kind of game just just dessert for Americans? Like we just want to come in, not be particularly challenged, just play video games, numb our minds, and that's just how we do it. Because I know, like, even up until Final Fantasy VII, the our fa- version of Final Fantasy VII is way dumbed down from the Japanese version. Right. Like, in the, for the PlayStation, Final Fantasy VII, you hit select, and arrows will pop up showing you the doors, all right. the exits, because they're, they're hard to see in the background animations. That's not a thing that the Japanese version has. You just have to find that door. No. So even that late in the game, mm-hmm. we're kind of like... Is is that Jap- Japan sending that to us, or is that it's in America being like, man, I'm not gonna hate that. Just put, put some arrows in. I I really would like to know the story because I, I surely there has got to be a story behind <coughs> that decision that mm-hmm. was made, uh, where we get Doki Doki Panic and Japan gets Super Mario Brothers too. Yeah. Well, I I think a lot of it's explained by the the what they consider to be the demographic that's being aimed at. Being I think it's we're kids. still little kids. You know, yeah, I, I mean, can't imagine trying to play this when I was like nine. <clears throat> Here's the thing. I mean, we may all know some adults that played, say, the NES know, yes. or an SNES. Like you know, maybe we had an uncle that dedicated you know a, a couple of hours to it or something. The uncle that mom doesn't let you stay alone with. <laughs> <laughs> It's just not very responsible. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, like, you know, I didn't know many adults that were into video games at all. And yeah. To feel that's a huge disparity between the United States in the late 80s, early 90s versus Japan in the late 80s, early 90s, I think are probably a lot more adults that were willing to throw down, you know, had a little more dedication than your average 10 year old. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That, that's probably a really good guess. And I, I mean, and it makes sense now because there's not nearly as much disparity between the two now. Uh, I mean, we pretty much all get the same releases that, now. Right. And, and that kind of 18 to 35 year old graphic, you know, you got to think about it, you know, then now that's kind of us. Now. Right. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> so I, um, I would play more of this. Like I, I know I'm going to be, I'm going to go home and I'm going to beat it. Um, I really, and, really and play this game. Really, yeah, and play, maybe play this game if I could if I could stay awake long <laughs> enough because it takes me a long time. Um, I wish there were. I'm gonna be sad when it's over because I wish there was more of it. Um, like I might actually go and play Meat, Meat Boy again because Meat Boy is incredibly difficult as well. Um, but I wish there was more of this. I wish there was more lost levels. Well, there'll be something similar, I'm sure, when the Mario level editor comes out in Wii U. Yeah. Like you'll get a ton of that to play through. Yeah. But then you have to worry about, like... But it's different. User-generated content is going to be different. Exactly. Because it's not, it's not a level designer doing it. It's 
just a guy, you know, and that's so, not the someone show. who is trying to fuck with you, right? <laughs> Which I still think Nintendo was trying to fuck with everybody. <laughs> Man, seriously, Dave Moore is really fucking good at Mario. I just mm-hmm. want to say that I watched him play for a long time. Man, you're you're really fucking good at Mario, dude. Thank you. I would not be <laughs> able to. Hang. Thank you. I, it's on my resume. It it's, everyone's, be. everyone's always really. It impressed. should be eight. Four in the <laughs> lost levels is nuts. I got I got the text from you, Tyler. It was like, you ready to record? And I was like on eight four, and I was like, man, if I could just if I could just ignore this for like thirty minutes, eight, I might be able to beat this game. Eight three, eight three was ridiculous. Like yeah. I mean, it was really, really like every nice. enemy is a hammer brother. <laughs> like every goddamn enemy. There are there are brother. like six. There are like. <laughs> I, I, this happened to me yesterday. Speaking of da- Dave's Mario skills, um, I go um, Tim and Kirsten are in visiting, and I'm like, we have dinner. I'm like, oh, I want to get some cookies. So I run to the store to get us. I'm going to bake some cookies for us. And on the way in, I see one of my. Yeah, we don't have any cookies <laughs> in the studio. <laughs> if you want yesterday's cookies, there. <laughs> he said, "We are right, <laughs> <laughs> But I go as on my way into the food giant. I see one of my aunts that an aunt I really don't see very often, like at all. Does like, this aunt listen to Tadbog? <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, she's kind of kind of a uh, a black sheep really aunt, basically. Uh, like I only see her at Christmas. She's a furry. She is a furry. <laughs> okay. She was in costume. In a black sheep costume. <laughs> No, I see her, and she's like, oh, I haven't seen the baby yet. And I'm like, oh, yeah. She's like, do you have any pictures? Yeah, and I pull up my cell phone, hit gallery, pull up. The first picture that goes full screen that she sees <laughs> is yeah. Dave's Mario paint art, the big black dick, <laughs> oh. I a girl's face. So I'm like, yeah, let me show you my baby. Popping up, popping up, popping up, popping up, popping up, baby. Big black dick popping around. <laughs> so I, just, I don't say anything and just quickly slide over <laughs> to the pictures of my daughter. <laughs> Here's what I want to know. We recorded that weeks ago. Why was that the first thing on your phone when you pulled it up? <laughs> That's the important Maybe question. Tired of watching. I'm glad that I could bring you some joy. It was a really, really good Mario Paint picture. There's none of that in the lost levels, unfortunately. I would sign me up. Do you have any achievements? I do. I've got a couple. Mm-hmm. I'm getting a couple. That's how you know that I liked it. I was I'm just about to ask you, did you like this game? What did you care for? I did like this game. So would you put, like, say the NES Top 100, would you put Mario 2 Japan release NES Top 100? Man, that's really that's a really hard question. I would put it in my personal Top 100, but I think on, like, a just a, a general Top 100, yeah, I probably would because I don't really think there were that many great NES games, right? I mean, this is going to be on there somewhere. It's just, it is, it's it's a tough game. Like, yeah. this game is not for everybody. It, like, you really have to be the person who wants a challenge. Mm-hmm. And and if you're not, then this game is not going to be for you. Like, yeah. 100% stay away from it because you <clears throat> will be frustrated. Um, I mean, like... I don't really think that I'm that great at Mario, to be honest. I just put in a lot of time. It's addictive for me. You're incredibly... Per- I've never met anyone who is persistent as you are when it comes to games. <laughs> like, I, I, I would like a hard game, but it needs to be hard enough that, like, I'll get it by my, like, my sixth try. Past that, then I'm not having fun. See, I like... And I was telling John earlier, like... Because he was telling me, on the, on the 3DS version, you, have, you also have the ability to save state. And... John was like, why aren't you safe stating? I was like, I, I am safe stating. I'm safe stating at the beginning of each level. So he went through each level from the beginning to the end. Mm. Because I don't think... And I would have been cheating like yeah. that. <laughs> well, you asked me why, and my response was, if I safe state in the middle of it, I'm not going to learn this game. Right. And that's, like, that's what I enjoy about this. This is a game that I can learn and develop a completely useless skill. Like That's what I've been doing over like, the past two days. I've just been developing this useless skill that is never going to be important in my life Dave, ever. Dave, you HTML5? No, I've been playing Mario 2, man. Sorry. Gonna, gonna, gonna learn that skill. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I do have, I do have a couple achievements. Um, the first achievement is the long and winding road. And in order to unlock the long and winding road, what you have to do is you have to beat Super Mario Brothers, the lost level, Super Mario Brothers 2, and Super Mario Brothers 3 in order. Uh, the second achievement I've got is a specifically Lost Levels achievement. Because in 8-4, there are two Bowsers. <laughs> you, you, there are two Bowsers. Not just one Bowser. There's yeah, two Bowsers. Yeah, they both throw the hammers. Yeah, they're throwing yeah. a stream of hammers. 
at Tyler's what's, face what's right the now. What's explanation of Fuck that? that. <laughs> I think. Have you heard this theory? Have we talked about this? That all like when you go into one of Bowser's castles and it's not the real Bowser, and you throw fireballs at him, he uh, before he dies, he turns into a like a, like a Goomba or, or or some kind of Hammer Brother. He always changes into something. So the theory is that the first Bowser in eight four is not the real Bowser. Okay. But to unlock this achievement, which is called Double Dragon, you need to beat twin Bowsers in the Lost Levels. Okay, that's good. Do you have any achievements? Yeah, I've got three. Okay. I've got Standard Dedicated Gamer, and you unlock that by beating all the games except Lost Levels. Okay. <laughs> and then uh, Dedicated Masochist Gamer, that's when you beat all the games. I haven't unlocked that yet. And then, <laughs> He's close, though. And then you must have had NES already, and that's where you beat just the Lost Levels. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say, watching watching you play this game, I think I'd like to think that it is a game that, as a kid, give, given that there's the continue mechanic, that I would have probably pounded it out. I may not have beat the game, but I would have probably been pretty far. I think you could. I, honestly, Tyler, I think that you could too. I, I I think that anyone could, but you got. I mean, like you have to you have to <clears throat> learn it. But, and, but it would have had to have been the version like you play those like Famicom or Virtual Console version where it was just like I watched that I watched part of that run through where you could see the the newer effects or whatever that mm-hmm. was added to it. Yeah. And I don't know that. Did you like it, Tyler? Did you like the graphical updates that they did? What did you do? You have an opinion? I on liked that? it on. I didn't enjoy it as much on Mario mm-hmm. the original. I liked it on two. And I did not like it on three. What was it about three that you didn't like? I didn't feel like the it looked as good. Yeah, because they kind of changed the way the faces look. Yeah, and they changed, well, I like I just didn't think it looked as good on three. I think it was really weird that they made the effort to update the graphics because um, it would have been so much easier for them to just be like, "Well, we did the thing that you want us to do, and that involves zero work." So. I guess we get money now, right? So I don't. I, it was just kind of weird that they took the time to to make the updates, and then I don't think the graphical updates were very good at yeah. all. That's how I feel about any game I see, like re-release, updated graphics. They all kind of look like that. It's not like they've redone the game like to look like it should. Now. Yeah, that's what I would expect a game to look like, as opposed yeah. to like textures just being smoothed out like, uh-huh. a little bit, like just putting it through like a program, just like start. B- 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 all right, updated yeah. version. Throw the Last of Us through Levelator. You got it, boss. <laughs> <laughs> like, Tim, hearing us talk about Mario All Stars and all the Mario games, does it make you be like? I give that game a go, or do you be like, man, this game sounds fucking awful. I'm especially not going to touch it now. No, I don't think I'd ever touch it. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. Because <laughs> I want the I want the American eight year old version of words. <laughs> See, I don't want the Japanese version. <laughs> <laughs> just seeing that every every pow block is a mushroom or a fire flower. It's all just goombas. <laughs> it's vigorously scrolling. Yeah. Yeah. Um... Blake wants us to draw the draft, the draft order for the fantasy football league because he really, I can tell, he's like it's going to be best for everybody. But what he translation, uh, I want to go ahead and set my draft up and like <laughs> fuck around with this. Mm-hmm. So what I'd like to do yeah, is that, that's the thing about Blake. Blake is he's like Littlefinger in Game of Thrones. Like, <laughs> he, he, he's going to tell you something and it sounds good. It sounds like oh that is a good idea, but it's totally in his own self interest and he's trying to mask it. <laughs> Tim, can you speak to this? Uh, I've played fantasy football with Blake for let's see. Four years, four or five years. So uh, I know his ways. He wants do to know you, what his numbers. Do be. you watch Game of Thrones? Um, I actually don't. Oh, yeah, okay. No. It's, it's next on my list. <laughs> you just referred to a priest as a little player. Yeah, that blows me away. Yeah, that's hilarious. Because what what is so what what's our kind of competition we're up against? How good is Blake at fantasy football? Um, have you started this league? Yet? He's, He's very savvy. <laughs> Probably. Okay. Is there money in it? No. no. Oh, that's pretty good. That's probably good. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think uh, I wouldn't be in it if there were money involved because I, I think lose five dollars. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Just don't <laughs> <it>. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you, but yeah, it's Blake just messaging us. Hey, can I have five dollars? Yeah, Blake. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> he did buy me. He did buy me a Steam game. So I mean, I couldn't really say a whole lot. He'd <laughs> be like, "Well, here's less than that game cost." <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're even, right? Thank you. And you get to feel like you're superior than me. So he, he bought you a game, saw that I already owned it, and then was like, well, I'm not buying you anything. <laughs> Thanks, Blake. 
I'm almost done writing these, by the way. Okay. Feel free to talk about anything. <laughs> so are these other guys that are playing in the fantasy football league? Uh, what they played before? You I know the guy, Sam of Mega Elixir, that got with Blake to start this. Okay. I know he is an experienced player. Yeah, we are giving Blake way too much credit. He didn't do this on his own. Yeah. Uh, it's just a lot of fun to insinuate that he's trying to fuck everyone over. I, I don't think Sam would do. That's no, all, Blake. No, no, Sam's a good guy. <laughs> See, and I enjoy that. We we can basically just like just dog on Blake, and he'll be at home laughing and enjoying it. He enjoys that kind of that, that abuse. As he would as, really like the lost levels. Yeah, <laughs> as long as he can dish it, as long as he can dish it back out, then then Blake Blake is good. That's I like. I really like having Blake on the show because I do feel like. I don't have to be like super nice to Blake when he's on the show. <laughs> I can kind of like say what I want. I know that he's going to say what he wants, mm-hmm. and like. Neither of us are going to be offended. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's like one of those where it's like, we know it's okay. It's a good feeling in not a relationship you can have with very many people. Yeah. So, like, a lot of yeah, a lot of people, like, I always try to watch being too insulting around. Yeah, Blake's not one of them, though. Whatever. Fuck you, Blake. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fucking Oathbreaker. <laughs> Now I'm meticulously tearing all of these out. Feel free. Let's continue the show, Tyler. Tyler, I've got a question for you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm busy with my arts and crafts project, but (laughs) if you were to give this game, I don't know, let's say say a beard. Mm -hmm. Um, We don't... We don't rank games with numbers because that's just okay. – that's way too – that's antiquated. It's mainstream. Yeah, exactly. We're, we're, we're hipsters if nothing else. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we we got to buck that trend. So we rate games with, with beards. Okay. Um, if you were to give this game, Tyler, a beard, and I'm sure it's going to be a good one, what kind of beard would you give it? I would give this the, the Beards of the Astari. Explain, please. So uh, the Astari – I'm going to get bogged down in terminology here. The Great. Astari are – my year that are they're the ones that are sent from above in middle earth to help uh the people of middle earth so gandalf your ear Ga- that's where the beards are, the beard starts <laughs> under the ear right <laughs> so gandalf saruman radagast and the, the two blue mages okay. that are that are unnamed okay. so because each one it's a different color it's they're a different mage so they each represent like the different games of mario all-stars as a beard that's a wow. That's, that's a deep. really good beard. I kind of thought you were gonna be like, I don't know, shit on a face. Because <laughs> <laughs> I still, I mean, I have my issues with this game, but I just, it, it's a good value. And if you miss a lot of stuff on the NES that you get to play, it's still like, yeah. If you're starting an SNES collection, this should probably be in it. I think that's actually that's really cool. fair. Would you say it's a circus of values? Sir, yes. <laughs> and but clearly, the lost levels are the two unnamed blue mages that never do anything. Okay. So. <laughs> uh, that's great because I also like blue mages a lot in Final Fantasy games. I so I think uh, like Tolkien's son later named them something, but not that's not real. It's not. Yeah, <laughs> it's not, I, I won't accept that. No, okay, I'm I'm not up on. And I'll, somebody will probably correct me that what I said about all of them, like their names. The I think they're called the Astari. I, I believe so. So Tony, Tony? let me know what I, what I messed up. Somebody uh, bring me up on what a blue mage is. So, in, in Final Fantasy, a blue mage is um, a mage that can learn enemies' magic, like the oh, the, okay. the spells and techniques okay. of monsters. So I'm sure that's not what it is in Lord of the Rings. God, I hope so. Wouldn't that be so great? Like a mimic, sort of? Sort of, once the enemy does that spell on a blue mage, then they have that on their spell list, and they can cast it whenever they want. But uh, you just have to encounter an enemy and have them use it on you. Okay. So it's it can be really effective. It's just kind of, it's interesting. It's always fun to try and get those, but... It's just that every Final Fantasy has some version of it. In. It takes a lot of collecting. It takes like a lot of time going around and finding the right monsters and, and waiting until they cast a spell on you. It's a lot like the Lost Levels. Like, <laughs> the, I, like, I don't think it's surprising that I like the Lost Levels and I also like collecting all the Blue Mage spells. So the Blue Mage thing is actually really appropriate. <laughs> uh, a Blue Mage is like a regular mage. It just kind of says racy things you know he's kind of he's kind of he's kind of blue <laughs> i just hang out with monsters and learn their spells i don't hang out with people blue man mm. <laughs> blue man. man i'm gonna go out to the swamp learn my blue major spells man do you see that deer <laughs> now nah, no deer hop <laughs> Tyler. Yes, Dave. Something else that we do on the show is there's also a dude who wears glasses on this, mm. and that is me. So we also give the the game a pair of glasses. 
If you were to give this game a pair of glasses, Tyler, what kind of glasses would you give it? I would give it from uh, Stephen King's magnum opus, The Dark Tower. Mm -hmm. I would give it Marilyn's Rainbow. Explain that one to me. Which, they are orbs of power that represent different aspects of life, and it revolves... And in a big way, they were only there are many different uh, of these orbs, and they're all different colors. Uh, each one's a different power. the The big two are the pink one and the black one. It's kind of like the Power Rangers. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so they just they each have different colors. They each have different powers, and they're all good and bad at the same time. So it's a you'd say a collection. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. What color would Lost Levels be? Black, it's black, black nineteen. It's the one you don't talk about. It's the one that just fucks. It just fucks with you. It's got its own <laughs> number <laughs> too. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, that does sound very lost <laughs> level. Is he? Anything else you want to do before we draw some? Uh, before everyone who doesn't give a shit about this, which is like everyone but fourteen people. Do you have a game? Do you have a? Do you have a question for us? I do have a question. <laughs> I was too busy tearing these out though. <laughs> um, and we've got a lot of players tonight. Um, players. My question yeah. for you is how much is this game on Amazon? If you were to go on to Amazon right now and purchase this game used, how much would it be? Super Mario All-Stars for the Super Nintendo. This is not Super Mario All-Stars plus Super Mario World. That's a very important point we need to get out in the front so no one can call bullshit. Okay. And we're using price of right rule. Pri the price is right rules. So whoever's the closest without going over and if you choose a dollar, you're an asshole. Right. But you can't you can do it. It's fine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But but you are an asshole. <laughs> it's a Blake Woods move is what it is. Right. <laughs> uh John, we'll start with you. Um how much is this game on Amazon? I'm gonna say six dollars and twenty seven. Six twenty seven from John. Please remember your your answer because I sure as fuck will not. Tim. Uh, five dollars and uh, one cent. Five dollars one cent. Okay, <laughs> strategy. I see. <laughs> Tyler, how much is this game on Amazon? Fourteen thirty-five. Fourteen thirty-five. Closest, without going over, for Super Mario All Stars for the Super Nintendo at the time of this recording is John Turley. Really? Actual retail value is thirteen ninety-nine. Tyler, you were like so close. So you were the closest, but you were I over. Went over. Thirteen ninety nine. Anyone care to take a gander, uh, take a stab at how much it is new? Two seventy five. Two seventy five. Tim. No idea. Just throw a number out there. <laughs> four thousand dollars. Yeah, four thousand. <laughs> four thousand dollars. All right. Four thousand dollars from Tim. I like your attitude, John. I say one eighty five. John Charlie again, <laughs> again new. On Amazon, this game is $200. Wow. It might as well be 4000 am I right? <laughs> <laughs> Who's going to pay that? <laughs> what else am I forgetting? Because my, my head is not in this show. No, we, get, uh, we do football, football raffle now. We do our football thing? Yeah. I'm so ready to get this done so I don't have to think about it. I've been thinking about this all day <laughs> where it's like, we got to do this thing. we got to do this thing that I don't know anything about. Yeah, I have no idea what we're doing right now. So what we're going to do is... <laughs> Can you fill us we're in? playing Dirty Santa. This is what number we draw. How do we pick the gifts? Kinda. Do you have like a little cup or something that I can put these in? I've got a, uh, a McDonald's cup right here. Yeah? <laughs> it's, it's it full it's of still wet. <laughs> <laughs> here's this here's this Jolly Ranchers bag you guys were using. Hey. Like here's a cup or or yeah. I know I like reaching into that thing. It reminds me of like a sex toy. By the way, Jolly Ranchers I don't know. are really good. They are really They're good. Tasty. This episode brought to you by Jolly Ranchers Bites. And Fresca. And Fresca. And Fresca. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And because we're hipsters, Pap Blue Ribbon. That's all I can drink. I drink half Fresca, half Pap Blue Ribbon because I'm, <laughs> I'm not mainstream. All right. You guys are lucky, Tim and John, because you actually get to take part in deciding the order of the draft. Right. So, um, Tyler, we'll start with you. We'll pass it around. I'm just going to go ahead and take that thing off mm -hmm. before I drop it. So this is for – there's 14 total. This is for the 14 spot. Okay. And we'll go, we'll go to one. So the 14 spot is Kyle. Kyle. Sorry, Kyle. <laughs> From what I understand, Blake says no, that no, one is the best? Uh, no, 14 could work out in his favor. He's okay. Never know. Congratulations, Kyle. Um, 13 then? 13. Just Brandon. Of Axelay fame. Brand X. Brand X. <clears throat> Fuck it. I'm writing these down. Blake, you do it. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to this episode and fucking write them down. I've done enough writing and tearing today. Twelve. 
is uh, I believe impresario Tony. Okay. All right. Mm-hmm. 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 We recently uh, we oh, don't, don't put it back, back in. Don't put that back in. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm a little lit. <laughs> 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 you, we just jumped all over you. <laughs> Do not put that back in the cup. Don't you dare fucking put that name back in the cup. <laughs> <laughs> don't put your name in the cup of the fire, John. <laughs> We're on twelve, right? Yeah. All right. Twelve is Sam. No, no, no this would be eleven. 11? 14, 14 13, 13, 12, 13, 12 11. 11. Okay. Mm-hmm. Sorry, Blake. Didn't mean to confuse you. <laughs> yeah. Number 11. If we fuck it up, you sort it out. <laughs> Number 11 is Sam. Congratulations, Sam. Mm-hmm. We have lovely prizes at the door. So 10. God. 10. It's. I don't think it says Beavis. Dennis. Dennis. <laughs> <laughs> Um, if it's if it's if you draw Tyler or me, just put it back in the cup. We're one and two. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> What's Dennis's time? Uh, next up, Lord. Yeah. Lord Drew. Dennis. Drew. Number nine. Number eight is <laughs> Tyler. Mm. No, that's not right. I mean, <laughs> shit. Okay, put that one back in the cup. <laughs> Number seven is Phil. Philly. Sandwich. Old Philly. Sandwich Prince. Mm-hmm. Number six, Dave. Man, I tried. I tried to get up there. You should have given. You should have done me a solid, Tyler. <laughs> okay, number five is Paul. I feel like this could be its own podcast, don't you guys? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Where we just say names. We just draw stuff out of cups. <laughs> and then pause. <laughs> they have no bearing on anything. All right, number eight is Strawberry. <laughs> strawberry. Cookie Monster. <laughs> What what number are we on again? <laughs> uh, it doesn't matter. Blake's keeping track. Yeah. yeah. Five is uh, Lord Mike of Purdue. All right. God, how is Blake gonna get fucking number one in this draw? <laughs> oh, we haven't drawn his damn name yet, have we? <laughs> uh, next one is oh, Blake. <laughs> All right. No, for real. Next one is Laura. Blake is gonna be fucking number one. <laughs> All right. So number two. <laughs> Oh man, it's not like I, I. Oh man, I can't see these names. What am I drawing? Oh, Blake. Oh, you almost made it, Blake. Uh, almost. Almost. I feel like I couldn't see that name sitting in the cup. <laughs> okay, uh, so this is number one, Joey. Joey, you win fantasy football. Mm-hmm. Congratulations. <laughs> man, That's, that was a good game. <laughs> I see why people go crazy over this. That was pretty fun. Man, they're having a uh, fantasy football draft party at my work. Is was it? Is it as cool as what just happened here? Uh, it probably won't be. We're doing that tonight. There will be barbecue involved. <laughs> no, no, it's like I don't know, on a weekend so everybody can come. Yeah. It's, it's some serious shit, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> is, it, is it mandatory? <clears throat> no, 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 it's not. But but Ian's supposed to be like the auctioneer. I'm not even sure what that auction would be. Oh, so. you're doing a draft auction. So that we just did for a snake auction. Yeah, so see, I'm glad you totally know what different. the fuck's going yeah. on. We, and then I, we, I won my league last year. I'm a fantasy football oh, champion. Wow. Shit. Right here. Wow. Do you have a ring? All right. I have a trophy. <laughs> Do you have a trophy? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah. I'm really impressed. Can you help me? Can I don't know. <laughs> that would be great. <laughs> it, Blake would hate it. It would be the best. <laughs> I'm going to be like Bernie Mac. Yeah, did you ever see that episode of Bernie Mac where he's like, he knows nothing about uh, fantasy football and he starts playing and he's just like, the Chicago Bears. He just picks the Chicago Bears. And, Every one of them. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be down for that. Is that, not, <laughs> is that. Does that not work? Not exactly. You can try it. From my understanding. Yeah, I think I might try it. I, you should. <laughs> See, I, I'm a huge Cincinnati Bengals fan, so I'm going to get hurt yeah. pretty bad. Yeah, that, well, could, that could be rough. Yeah, that, that's the team that Ojo Cinco plays for. Yeah. Used to. I know that. Oh, oh. He's, now, now he's a reality TV star, right? He's, well, he Baltimore. went to Dallas, right? When he well, cowboy he's, he's for gone a minute? Now. Yeah, he's, he's, he's out retired. of the... Yeah, he's mm. He lost his life playing the Lost Levels. No one saw him again. <laughs> Poor, that's Ted Buck Cannon. Chad Oak, <laughs> Played the Lost Levels so much he quit football. How far? Allegedly. <laughs> <laughs> How far did he get? Oh, he beat it. He, oh, he beat, beat it. it? Yo, he beat it. Was it was worth the sacrifice. <laughs> it, it's kind of like at the end of a Final Fantasy game where it's like he beat it, but like... 
That was the ultimate sacrifice. Oh, yeah, he had to he had to pay the price. But like it's supposed to be like a four to five hour function. Give this part fantasy part football it. thing? The, yeah. the draft. It could the be. Auction. It depends. Is that how long ours is gonna be? Because that sounds awful. <laughs> <laughs> I think a lot of our people are can't make it. So it's yeah, like you'll probably are setting up on audio. Yeah, drafts, you'll probably do it so. online. So it'll go faster. Well that's good. Yeah. Do you do you know of ways to fuck with people who are auto drafting? Pick a kicker early on. Okay, yeah. got it. <laughs> got it. I've heard. Can the, I pick all kickers? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I I'll call my team the kickers <laughs> until your bench is full. Yeah. <laughs> I remember. I've got a bench. I'm happy. <laughs> I remember some guys at work talking a lot about that and how like important the kicker actually is because kickers score a lot of points. Uh, maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, good luck. Yeah, you're <laughs> <laughs> That face you were All making. Right. Was I I've like, watched the league. Whatever I am saying is wrong. <laughs> based on the I've, face I've seen Moneyball. I know. Yeah. Say, sabermetrics. Yeah. I know what's going on. I've watched Holy the league. Guy. I'm good. I got Reddit. All I got to do is ask a dude. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There's got to be an R fantasy football. We just like, mm, you hey, know there is. Do this for us. <laughs> I. I'll give you a Bitcoin. You guys must be the only old game fantasy football podcast out there. <laughs> yeah, we, we like to call ourselves Final Fantasy Football. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thanks for listening, everybody. You can find us on iTunes or Stitcher. So you don't miss the next episode. We'll be talking about... Taryn, probably. Taryn. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that'll be our next episode. Taryn's going to be Virginity here. theft. <laughs> uh, Shh. Hey, we'd like five star reviews. No notes, huh? That's, yeah, listen, this scene was transition. Uh, hey, give us a five star five star review and write a review, and we like it. Give the five star. Give the five star review, and if there's a, a game you want us to play, mm-hmm. include it in your five star review, and we will get to it eventually. eventually. Don't worry, guys. Like Tyler said, we're going to be back. We are probably going to be talking about fantasy football. I'm willing to bet. And we're going to get some more tips from Tim. He's graciously offered to come back on the show. Uh, so look, Just, It'll be a new thing, Tim's fantasy football tips. <laughs> so look forward to that. We're going to fly him in every week. <laughs> Disrupt his whole life. New segment. <laughs> Ted Hawk Studios. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, you're having a good time. You're drinking wine. You're sure, yeah. Talking Mario and football. I mean, <laughs> kickers we got it <laughs> people are gonna love this um in the meantime if you can't get enough tadpog goodness you can always find us on tadpog.com that's where the show notes live um also sometimes we have pornography on there mm-hmm. <laughs> so if you're into that which let's face it you made it to the end of a tadpog episode you're into that um you can go and check out the show notes the other day i was going to text you pornographies and my wonderful spell spell checker corrected that into porn ogre pie <laughs> So what else I've ever used that instead of pornography? I don't know. Hey, Dave, man, you just sweet porn ogre pie. It's, uh, I, I wish you'd have sent it. <laughs> <laughs> you can also find us on Facebook. We are at facebook.com slash tadpog. I learned something today, and that is I have been saying that our Facebook page is private. Because I thought that it was. Mm-hmm. I thought that anything that you said on Facebook, on our Facebook page, Grammy and Gramps, they are not going to see that. Mm-hmm. I was wrong. They <laughs> are going to see that. So I'm sorry. That's on me. But from here on forward, know that it's public. John, are you okay? <laughs> sorry. This is <laughs> funny because how many episodes <laughs> into this show? I, I, I think it's... How Once long? you can do a certain amount of time. likes, it switches over. According to Exalted Lord Mike, which I like, I never, I never got a notification that said, "Hey, dog, you're, you're like awful page. Like <laughs> that you just say like the weirdest shit on. That you never want any of your coworkers or any of your family to see. We're just gonna go public with that. Never, uh, never did I see that notification. I feel like it must have been recent because today I noticed somebody from Meg's Church liked a tadpog picture. I think I <laughs> oh no! Oh wow! Uh, so we're really gonna so. We'll don't try, we'll don't go to, to Facebook. <laughs> don't go to Facebook because that's not going to be there anymore. Be private the next time you want to post something, <laughs> probably. I like to think someone at Facebook is fucking with us. They're like, "Oh, these guys think they're pretty cool, on, huh?" Off, on, <laughs> off, on, off. <laughs> so uh, if, if you need more embarrassment after that, after you've humili- humiliated yourself on Facebook, humiliated yourself. <laughs> I like how I say it, just fine. Uh, you can find us on Twitter. We are at tadpog underscore podcast. It is cumbersome, I realize. Um, there's people there, retweeting us. Thank you for doing that. I appreciate it. You're, you're doing great work. 
And sometimes you tweet to us and we tweet back. That's how I hear Twitter works. So mm-hmm. thanks for showing us how to utilize the internet. You can call us if you want. Mm-hmm. You got a got a question? You have um, – let's just keep it to a question. Uh, you can call us. <laughs> any, any just weird <laughs> rambling stories you want to tell? No, let's, we're not doing that. <laughs> we're not doing that. You have to ask a question. <laughs> Oh, we're not playing it unless we want to. Uh, <laughs> unless it's so good we can't not play it. <laughs> so try real hard. You can reach us at 270-883-2555. Our theme song. Who are you going to ask? I'm going to not embarrass Tim and ask John. <laughs> <laughs> we embarrass everybody. You must really like Tim. I do. <laughs> okay. Well, all right. You're, that's good. That's real good. You know he live with Blake. You don't have to like that. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be nice. If he live with Blake. Right. He endured. <clears throat> John, our theme song. Uh, moves by Sycamore Drive. And where can they find a link to that track? In the show notes at tadpog.com. Nailed it. Are you okay? Oh, yeah. I think you were about three sheets more than you were last week. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You're good, though. Oh, yeah. I'm all right. Okay. I'm a little worried. This is happening every week. (laughs) No. (laughs) Just increase that. This is not need to happen every week. I'll get you a sick bucket next week. It's interesting. Oh. No, we're not. We're not even remotely there yet. (laughs) All right. So, like, four weeks from now. Challenge accepted. (laughs) Tyler's going to spend $400 on alcohol. Then we'll see how sick you are. <laughs> thanks for coming on, guys. I appreciate it. Yeah, thanks, thanks for having us. For having us. Yeah, definitely. Nice to meet you, Tim. I can't wait till you're back next week to talk about fantasy football. <laughs> <laughs> Always good to have you, John. Well, thank you. Next time we'll get you more drunk. Oh, that's really not necessary. <laughs> I got so much alcohol, I'm not gonna drink, John. You have to, you have to drink it for me. And you're helping, Tyler. Mm-hmm. Just, oh, what am I gonna do with all this alcohol, John? <laughs> you're like, it's like Seinfeld with the muffin bottoms. Like I've got all this alcohol, I don't know what to do. I need a fixer. <laughs> I mentioned the muffin top episode to my wife not that long ago. It was like, stops, stops, baby, don't stops. <laughs> Stumps. stumps aren't as good. They're not as good. They're not as good. I don't. I don't get that. I mean, yeah, they don't have that nice kind of that sheen on them. Tops have stumps. It's still the same shit. I mean, they're still good. Tops. Tops are GTFO. <laughs> <laughs> so until next time. Tropical Capricorn. My phone's dead, so I have no idea how long it was.